Before I was a mother, I thought I knew. I thought I knew what love looks like. I thought I knew the value of sleep. I thought I knew the sound of success. Before I was a mother, I thought I knew the beauty of a prayer, the potential of my joy, the length of my patience. I thought I knew the depth of art. The soul of laughter. <laughs> the importance of magic. Before I was a mom, I thought I knew the stress, the worry. healing of peace. I thought I knew how to keep my head. This is the third time, let's go! I thought I knew how to fix my parents' mistakes. I thought I knew how to be a cool mom. Before I was a mother, I thought I knew. But now I realize I had a lot to learn. And you were teaching me the whole time, even before I was aware of it. You were welcoming me into the sisterhood of mothers. A calling as old as love itself. Never grow out of being a mom. You know, it's Mother's Day as we've heard. So you know, as you look on Mother's Day, you kind of think about your story, your labour story, your pregnancy story, your growing the children's story. So you know what I thought? I'll share with you my pregnancy story. You know, it's my story. I thought I can just share the delight of what it was like to be pregnant. There is a meaning to this, so this is my journey. So, you know, Brett and I got married just over 18 years ago when we had a plan that, yes, we'd have children, but we'd wait a little while. Well, six months into our marriage, I fell pregnant. Surprise, not an accident. Surprise because no child is an accident. So I was 21 when Shania came along. But when I was pregnant, you knew I was pregnant. I was pregnant from, you could tell from every angle that you saw me, that woman's pregnant. She turned around, that woman is definitely pregnant. Everything about my body says, you are pregnant and you do not look cute. <laughs> there was nothing cute about my pregnancy. I was that big that I had to wear Brett's thongs and his jocks. I seriously, nothing fitted me. I was that big. So it was not very cute at all. So mum, mum came down. She came down the day or two before I was due and we went out for a walk the day before my, I was due and get me going because I was just massive. So, you know, I was walking. Mum's going, come on, Dad. I'm like, and I'm just at the front door, you know, just trying to carry, carry Shania. It's like, you can do it. So that was, that was, a, that was a Thursday. That night, I went into labour. And it was like instant pain. I know you ladies remember. It was like instant pain. And you're like, yes, this is happening. All right. So I'm very modest, I'm very private. So I had, my, I had a crop top on and I had a cute little dress because I'm gonna go in 
and nobody but the person at my knees will see anything. That was it. So I had my cute little dress on because mum was in the room and that's how pride. I don't even share with mum. So I thought I'm going to look cute and I'm, just got this, I'm not going to show anybody anything. So I've got my little dress on. So become, this was a Thursday night. So I hadn't slept since the Wednesday night. Come Friday night, I was still 39.5 centimetres, no, sorry, 9.5 centimetres dilated. So as mothers know, you have to be 10 centimetres dilated to give birth. I was 9.5 centimetres dilated for two days. That's what it felt like. It took another 0.5 centimetres, which is not even that. It took me, it felt like another four days for half a centimetre. It wasn't four days, but it felt like another four days. Half a centimetre. And just that, that bearing down, it's like, don't push. I have to. Taya, this is a nurse's, don't push. I have to push. Like, I'm telling them, them what to do. I was in the ball, I was in the bath. I was in the ball, I was in the bath. I was standing, I was walking. The 39th hour, that dress was off. I'm sorry. But dignity just went out the window. I was that big, you couldn't see anything anyway. <laughs> my ankles were the size of an elephant's thigh. You know, I was that big anyway. So I'm just like, I don't care. I am 30, I'm in, I'm, I am 10 centimetres dilated. I'm telling the nurses, like, no, Tay, you're not. I'm like, I am. Check me again. Have another look. I am 10 centimetres. Like, Taya, you're not. Anyway, so that went on for a while. So I hadn't slept for two days. Mum and Brett, I was making sure they didn't sleep either. They're on this journey with me. So you are not sleeping either. But I was that tired and in that much pain. I, my contractions were every 30 seconds. So I'd scream for 30 seconds and then snore for 30. Scream for 30, snore for 30. Scream for the, I just went into a deep sleep like... <laughs> was a cycle and it just felt like forever this thing I'm like this thing is not coming out of me so leading up to the delivery we had our prayer book it's going to be a miraculous birth you know it's going to be pain free it's my first child it's going to be pain free and I had the prayers and I had the scriptures and you know we had the worship music and we you know we go in with my pretty dress on and yeah you know I'm in pain but like this baby's going to come out you know I'm going to see this thing in a couple of hours yeah well by you know like 39 hours later don't worship to me <laughs> don't say anything to me this baby's just going to come out anyway so that was our plan Anyway, so the doctor lays him in the bed and he's like, look, oh, I did get to 10 centimetres. I did. For two hours, Shania did not want to come out. It was like... <laughs> I'm like, okay, my body is ready. You can come out now. She's like... She was happy in there. Seriously, her heartbeat was fine. She was not moving. I was straddling the toilet, like the cistern, like, okay, now, be, you know, now push. And I was pushing, and she's like, I'm not coming out. <laughs> and I'm like, it has been nearly two days. I am now finally 10 centimetres. You will come out. <laughs> anyway, the doctor put me on the bed. He's like, look, you know, she's, the baby's not coming out because we didn't know what we're having. But the baby's not coming out, and we think, you know, you probably... We're going to do forceps or, you know, cesarean. And I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> just do what you need to do. And Brett's like, oh, you know, Tay, what do you think we should do? I'm like, just get the baby out. <laughs> anyway, he's like, well, forceps are not going to work. We're going to have to do a um, cesarean. Sign me up. Where do I sign? Yep, I'm happy. I give you my authority to cut me open and get this child out now very quickly. And Brett's like, oh, no, you know, okay, what do we do? And anyway, so... The doctor takes me to the theatre and gets me ready and one doctor takes Brett outside and, and gets him prepared. So we've got two different stories starting to happen. I'm in theatre in absolute agony. Two days of pain, sleeplessness, apart from maybe 30 seconds. But 
you have to have a needle in the middle of a contraction. And he was my worst enemy. I said to him, do you know how much this hurts me? You do not need to put a needle in while I'm contracting. Yes, yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh. (laughs) Instant pain had gone. I'm like, I love you. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is good. I'm not in pain anymore. And, you know, I'm laying down. I'm like, oh, this is so good. You know, the drugs are kicking in. And I'm delirious because I haven't slept for two days. And, and meanwhile, Brett's outside. He's shunned him a hundred and up and down the hallway thinking, this is not what we planned. This is not what we prepared. Taya's going to be so upset. And I've got to now face her. What am I going to do? And, and the doctor actually came out and said, you know, it was, wasn't long ago that Brett would have had to decide between mum or baby. So that was a bit of reality kind of kicked in. So yes, we had our plan. But you know what? God's plan is greater. God's plan is greater. So anyway, so Brett's all prayed up, ready to come in to face me. And and I'm just singing. Because, you know, one arm's out here because you've got the heart monitor. The other arm's out here because you've got the drugs kicked in. I'm just like... (laughs) And he's just looking at me. He's like, what is wrong? I'm like... I'm not in pain and I'm in love with the doctor. (laughs) He's like, what has happened to my wife? I'm like, I'm not in pain anymore. I can't feel it anymore. And anyway, so we kind of calmed down a bit. So he's, you know, I don't know if when you're cesarean, you're kind of laying down and Brett's kind of head there and and there's this sheet and, you know, and there's this mountain of my belly because when you sit down, it's just a mountain of a belly. Anyway, okay, okay, we're ready. We're going to meet our, our baby. This is really exciting. And there was silence. I'm like, and everyone's just like, and Brett's just gone. They pulled out this baby. And heads followed as they went from doctor to nurse. It was like, looked back at me, looked back at the baby, and the baby's crying. So I knew the baby was okay. She was screaming. I'm like, what, what's happening? Yeah, you've had, a, you've had a girl. I'm like, oh, really good. Why, why is everyone so in awe? Like, this is watching this baby just get past. And then she just, like, lumped on my chest, and she's just screaming at my face. And it's like, hello. You know, I'm like, what's going on? So they took her again, and they're like, your baby is big. <laughs> okay, is she healthy? Yes, yeah, she's healthy, but she's big. Okay, well, how big? She's 11.3 pounds. I'm like, yeah, that's big. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I felt that big. I looked that big. <laughs> so she was 5.125594 kilograms born. That was our little Shania. So the birth of Shania taught me a really great lesson. For the next child, just book in for a cesarean. (laughs) Straight up. I still had prayer. I still had faith. But I tell you what, I was booking in straight away. And you know, the pain and the, the suffering of labor, you do kind of, you never forget it. But then you go back again. And you go, oh... So we fell pregnant about a year and a half later, but unfortunately we had a miscarriage at nine weeks. But then not long after that, you know, we we fell pregnant and um, we really wanted a boy. You know, you hear these stories of things you can do. And um, so after we did, I heard you stand on your head. Okay, the little swimmers go a bit faster maybe, I don't know. So I was on on my head, the back of the bed, doing a headstand, and I was shunned him a hundred, and I'm like, God, I want a boy. So I'm on my head, believing for a boy. And God's like, you don't have to stand on your head. <laughs> but if whatever works for you, you know, it's like, so I'm upside down, praying over my belly, yep, this is it, we're going to conceive a boy, and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it worked. Well, uh, we're pregnant with Eli. 
Now, he was our tiny baby. So when he was born, like Shania was, she was lanky, but she had this really thick set torso. Hey, like she just was, her torso was just a really thick, and I'm actually thankful she didn't come out that way because I may not be able to sit down today. I don't know. So I'm actually, God just intervened and said, look, you need that cut out a different way because that's not going to be healthy if she comes out the natural way. She's that big. I'm like, well, thank you, God, for intervening. So with Eli, he was just this lanky little baby. I'm like, oh, you know, what do I do with him? Well, he was 9.8 kilos, uh, 8 kilos, 8 pounds, so which is 4.45 kilos. So, but to me, that was little compared to, even though it's only half a kilo, but he was our tiny baby and, and all as well. So that's my... That's my labour. That's my labour, my pregnancy story. But you know, the other story that God has kind of brought to my attention as well is the spiritual labouring, the spiritual seed that, that God plants within us and that the spiritual pregnancy and the spiritual labour that we can experience as well. So I kind of want to share you our spiritual pregnancy journey with you as well. So I liken to meeting my husband like you meet Jesus. When you meet Jesus, you begin this wonderful relationship. You're just so in love. Like when you meet your partner, you're just so in love and you get married and you're like, how many kids do you want and how far apart? Do you want a boy? Do you want a girl? And you know, you start planning and you, and you start thinking ahead. So that's your planning stage. You meet your partner, you get married and, and then you're at your planning stage. And that's like with Jesus. So we have plans that he's given us. He's given us desires and a, and a purpose. He's, he's given us a drive within us. So when we got married just over 18 years ago, we had the seed that wasn't planted, but it was around our life for church and for pastoring. So this seed was ready to be planted within our life over 18 years ago. So this is what we were talking about. We're planning and it's like, yeah, are we, are we not? Do we pastor? You know, we're going to kill people because we didn't have that training, that guidance in our communication. It's like, should we, should we not? People say we are. You know, so we just had this church pastoring um, heart, I could say, over 18 years ago when we got married. You know, in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, and they are to give you a future and a hope. He is our future. He knows our tomorrow, and he is our hope in our tomorrow. His plans are good. Plans. That means he's got a plan for you. There is a plan destined for your life. So the next stage is, is we conceive this plan. So there's a plan that we have and the plan that God has given us and now it's conception time. You know, we no longer talk about having children, you know. Now you actually conceive a child. And so that's like it was time that God planted that, that seed within us. It is now time to start talking church or start having the idea of church and, um, and moving into the, the, what God has on our heart for church. So that the seed kind of takes root in our lives. But you know what, church? We have to say yes to that seed because God is a gentleman. We have to say, okay, I want your plan. I want your purpose, your desires for me. I, I need that. You know, yes, God plant that seed within us. It's until we say yes, does that seed actually come and take root with inside of us and begin to develop. And that's what Brett and I did. We said yes when we said yes to assistant pastoring. So that was over four years ago we conceived with this seed. So 18 years ago there was a seed, but it wasn't until four years ago that seed was planted within us. So now we're pregnant with this seed. You know, the, we're waiting for it to come to pass. That we're pregnant and, you know, pregnancy is nine months. So you, you've got at least some kind of, he'll take a few weeks. So there's still that unknowing is when it's going to come, when I'm going to deliver, and that whole expectancy of what it's going to look like. Is it a boy? Is it a girl? You still kind of really don't know. You know you're pregnant, but you don't know exactly who this person is yet inside of you so you know 
you can feel it growing and you know we begin to change as well there's preparation that's needed you bring a baby home you've got the cot you've got the pram you've got the nappies you've you've had the party and you know you've got the clothes you've got everything ready in preparation for this baby so you've prepared for this baby to come for the arrival and that's the same with us that we need to prepare for what God is doing so we're pregnant with something so we need to prepare what God is doing in our lives. But you know, there's a time of wrestle as well. Like when you're pregnant, you're uncomfortable. You know, it's hard. You're growing, you're stretching. And you know, same with when you're, you're pregnant with the, the, the purposes of God. You know, there's a wrestle, there's trials. You're stretching, you're, you're beyond where you think your capacity could be. And that, that whole waiting and the, the unknown, the, the challenge to kind of step out of your comfort zone. When I st- stood out of our house, you, stood, you saw me, the belly, before you saw me. It was like, there's Taya. You saw the belly and like, oh, is she coming? Yep, there she is. Yep, no, that's Taya. She's coming along. There's that uncomfortable. I, I didn't want to go out after a while. I was that uncomfortable and that big and my legs were rubbing that much. It was like, do I have to? I don't want you to go out. I was uncomfortable carrying and this, this child that was within me. And we can be uncomfortable when we are challenged with what God is wanting us to do because that's challenging our flesh. It's moving our flesh in 1 Peter 5, 6 to 7, it says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He cares for you. And so what we need to do while we are pregnant with that seed, while that seed that God has placed within us, while we're pregnant, we've just got to humble ourselves before God and say, God, in due time, I know I know this will come to pass. I know whatever you're doing in me, whatever is happening in me, I know it will come to pass because you care for us. So in the past four years, we have been pregnant. Brett and I have been pregnant with this seed when we said yes to being assistant pastors. Now that's a long pregnancy. You think nine months is hard? (laughs) Four years. It wasn't hard. No, look, look, no, it wasn't hard. No, just, let me just clarify. <laughs> it was a beautiful pregnancy time. But then, but then what? When is it going to happen? You know, when is this, this seed that, that's been you know, conceived in you, when is it going to come to pass? And you get excited and you, you start dreaming. You start having plans and ideas. And you're like, yeah, we can do this and we can do that. And then it's time for labor. You know, the birthing of the seed of what God has put inside of you. You get to the end and you're just so ready to get it out. It is time to come out. Whether you're screaming at the doctors, get it out. You know, we can come to God saying, God, surely it is time. Surely it is time. There is something going on here. I possibly could not stretch anymore. We don't know the day, you know, we don't know how long it will take. We even question, is this normal? Is this normal? So 18 months ago, you know, we felt a shift from assistant pastoring. So 18 months ago is when our labour started. We didn't know exactly what was going on, but we really felt something different. We really felt that stirring within us. It was like, whoa, God, what's, what's happening? You know, that's when we really felt that the birthing was going to take place. That really stirring was happening, that real spiritual stirring. You know, we spoke to mum and dad and, you know, they were going to stay put for a few more years. So retirement was not on their agenda. We're like, okay, okay, well, God, you know, what is it? What is it that you want us to do? You know, we felt to stay in Mackay. We had a couple other churches offered to us. And we're like, you know, God, you said Mackay. You said Mackay. So we just sat on it, we just prayed, we just humbled ourselves before God and said, God, this is, this is it. We're in labour. Obviously hindsight's a good thing because at the time you kind of don't feel like that's what's happening. But this is a journey that we can now look back on and just say, man, God, this is what you have been doing. You know, um, so we've been in labour for 18 months. 
John 16, 21, it says, A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. You know, that labor, we can go through something, and it's a wrestle, and it's hard, and it's really tough. But when God says, the joy that comes into the world, that you have born a child. If you put the spiritual aspect to that, what you bring is a joy. What you have birthed, what God has birthed through you, is an absolute joy. It kind of diminishes that anguish. That wrestle is like, well, that was worth it. That was worth the labor. That was worth it. And that's how I felt when I had Shania. That was worth it. It was hard. It was really hard. But it was worth it to give birth to a beautiful, healthy, big girl. It was worth it. So delivery has finally come and we begin a new journey, you know. The relief factor, the wow factor has come. So last Sunday, we gave birth. When we announced to you that, you know, we're going to be the, the, the new senior pastors of City Impact Church, that was our giving birth. That was a, a release of what God had kind of planted, well, had over our life 18 years ago, planted over four years ago, labored for 12 months to finally give birth last Sunday. Isaiah 66, 9 says, Shall I bring forth, sorry, shall I bring to the point of birth and not cause to bring forth, says the Lord? Shall I who cause to bring forth shut the womb, says God? What God has planned, He will bring it to pass. When you're pregnant, it has to come out. You can't just go, mm, change my mind. It's not coming out. The baby has to come out. And that's when we are pregnant with that seed God has placed within us. It has to come out. God says it. What, you think I'm going to shut your womb? No, it's going to come out. Because he's called you. He's got a purpose and a plan for you. And then the next stage is nurturing, the learning, the new stages of growth. What do we do now? Where are we going now? You know, Deuteronomy 28.4 says, Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Increase over City Impact Church. That's what he is saying. The what now is the increase over City Impact Church. And that's not mean we stand here and we are receiving. It means we stand here and we are giving birth. It means you are going to be pregnant with what God has planned for you. It means you have to give birth as well. And as you give birth, he says, there will be increase. There will be prosperity. There will be blessings. Church, I encourage you, is there a seed that's been waiting to be planted in your life? That God's just waiting for you to go, yes, okay, let's, let's do this. What is it? Is there a seed? Maybe a seed has been planted in you. Can I have the worship team, please? Thank you. Maybe... You know, the seed has been planted in you and, you know, you feel like you're, you're, you're pregnant with something. You know, whether it's a, a new career, starting a business, a book, a song, a poem, learning a new instrument, a ministry, a prophetic word, whatever it may be, that's a seed God is wanting to plant within you. You know, you might even feel... A stirring, and I don't mean a natural stirring where one day you're feeling this and the next day you're not. This is a spiritual stirring where it's such a, a knowing, a knowing that something is different is happening. Like it's a knowing that, wow, my heart's changing. Um, I'm seeing things differently. Like God's revealing things. It's a, a time when you're pressing with God and you're just knowing. It's just a knowing. You know when you're pregnant, there is a knowing within you that you can feel this child moving within your womb. That's the same with God. You can feel it within you that He has put something inside of you and it's growing and it's growing.
Maybe you're in labour right now. Maybe it's time to give birth. Maybe it's time to give birth to what's, what's on your heart to do, what you're called to do. What is God saying for you to do? And you might feel that wrestle because in your heart you feel completely different but everything around you is the same. So you're like having to remain focused, having to, to keep going, but even though inside of you you just know something's about to change, something is happening, but you could just be in labour. Maybe it's time for you to give birth. So what now? Well, can I tell you that this is a church, that this is a body of Christ. We are a family. We're going to be in the, the labour room with you, supporting you. When you announce your pregnancy, we're going to celebrate with you. We're going to walk through the pregnancy with you. And when it's time to give birth, we're going to be your support crew. We're a place where we're going to allow you to dream. We're going to allow you to achieve whatever is on your heart to achieve. We're a church that just goes, give it a go. Have a go and say yes to what God has put on your heart to do. You know, the Word says, fear not, for I am with you. Fear can stop us and we can actually stop God planting that seed within us because of fear. But God's Word is so powerful. His name is so greater than fear. So can I encourage you today to let go of fear and allow yourselves to be opened up so the seed can be planted within you. He said, I've redeemed you and I've called you by name. Child, you are mine. He has made a declaration over your life. He has taken you out from the clutches of sin and death and He has brought you to life so that you can produce life, so that you can give birth to life, so that you can be prosperous, that you can produce fruit for His kingdom. What God has planted within you, He'll be with you every step of the way. He's not going to just allow you to conceive and then just let you be. He's going to breathe on that seed. He's going to guide you through your pregnancy. And when it's time to labour, He's going, child, I've got your hand. We're going to labour together. And when that delivery comes, God is there celebrating for that seed to come and produce much fruit. And He's going to continue on because then we're going to get pregnant again. And then we're going to get pregnant again. It's not just a one-off pregnancy. What is God going to conceive in you? Dare to dream. And you know, it's not too late. How old was Sarah? In the natural, she was an old woman when she conceived. There's many women in the Bible that took a while to conceive a child. And they did in their old age. So that, is, that excuse, I'm too old, it just doesn't cut it. Oh, I've been around for too long, old in the faith. I don't think so, there's not a word for that. Oh, I'm just new at this. Nah, sorry. We love you too much and God loves you too much to allow you to sit and just ponder about the seed. Allow you to sit with that seed hovering without doing anything about it. There's a purpose in the seed. Are you willing to conceive?